Greetings viewers, warriors, you have got that funk, and this is a video response to my friend JJ Talks and her recent video called Stick It to the Stigma. She's trying to uh, raise awareness about mental health issues and destigmatize them, and I think that's a worthy goal, and I wanted to throw in my sort of two cents on the conversation. Now, let me stress, I've never been diagnosed with any kind of mental illness, so I don't really know what it feels like to have one from an experience point of view. But I certainly know what it's like to be the significant other of someone with serious mental health issues. I've had one partner who was bipolar and borderline psychotic, and another partner who had severe uh, depression and self-esteem issues, and uh, several partners who were very much into self-harm. And it's not easy. It's not easy watching someone that you love and care about hurting themselves suffering. It's really hard just to watch it, just to be there. And to the sufferer, I would say, you need to recognize how difficult it is to watch you go through what you're going through. You need to appreciate that for someone to be prepared to be there for you, it has to mean they love you very much. They care about you very much. And I know sometimes your thoughts can become so dark that you can't imagine that someone could really want to be with you or really love you because you don't love yourself. You think of yourself as a shit person or whatever. And it's often the case that someone going through severe depression will try to push the people who care about them away. And if they succeed in doing so, then it reinforces and justifies the way they feel about themselves. So if you're the significant other of someone who's going through that sort of uh, phase in their mentality, just try your best to remember two things. Number one, a mental illness is a genuine illness. Every bit as much as chicken pox is or the flu. All right? Um, just because you can't see any spots or, you know, uh, they're not having a fever or anything like that doesn't suggest for one second that it's not a genuine illness. Number two, and this is the most important advice I think I can give. No matter how hard your significant other might be making it for you by putting their emotional baggage on you um, and, and so forth, and, and you know, it is, can be really hard to deal with someone in the throes of self-loathing. But no matter how hard it is for you to deal with that, it's harder for them to go through it. And you need to hang on to that. Because if you can withstand as much as possible during their moments of clarity, you will be something of a hero in their eyes. They will really appreciate, understand, and truly believe that you must love them because there could be no other explanation for why you put up with what you have to put up with. Okay? Now, everybody is entitled to their red lines, and there are certain things that no one should have to put up with. I would include being physically assaulted in that category as an example. Unfortunately, that's what happened to drive me away. Otherwise, I would still be in those relationships now. So let me stress to my friends and viewers who do suffer from mental illness and have a significant other, I hope you appreciate what you've got because all of us, even those of us without mental illness, every human being is in some degree hard to love sometimes. And that being so, you need to just appreciate the fact that you have that love and whatever you do, try your very best, no matter how hard it is to go through what you're going through, to appreciate and value the fact that your partner is putting up with that and they didn't necessarily have to, you know? I think that's all I really needed to say for this video. I want to thank you for watching this video and until next time, may all your ups and downs be ups.